Welcome to another gathering of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. Have a seat by the fire as we prepare to help you unlock the secrets of the travel life. From theme park thrills to Purple Mountain's majesty, we want to see it all and do it all, and we want to help you do the same. We all have those bucket list trips, once in a lifetime destinations that we'll get to someday. We're here to help you make your travel dreams a reality. Buy the ticket, take the trip. Where do you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, now tell me what's on your bucket list. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. On my honor, I promise if you earn our travel merit badges, you'll rank up your adventure skills to the level of Master Globetrotter. But first, travel news, including all the details on Disneyland's reopening on April 30th, cruises through the Caribbean and the jungle, plus a stinky museum and a stinkier festival. Pack your knapsack and pitch a tent. It's time to hit the trail with the Gold Key Adventure Society. One of the best things about this show is it lets us go beyond the typical travel basics of where to go, how to get there, and what to eat once you've arrived. Our goal is to help you see travel not so much as a series of isolated events as a whole lifestyle, and to help arm you with the skills you need to be the best traveler possible. This week, we have a whole checklist of travel merit badges that we think you should earn to help you advance in ranks towards being a master adventurer. But first, I have a very serious and important question for the Gold Key Adventure Society to ponder. If an evil witch turned you into a T-Rex and forced you to race against other T-Rexes at a track where humans would cheer you on and bet on the winner, what would your Thunder Lizard alter ego's name be? The Rexecutioner. Ooh, that's nice. She's a small arms. Swift. She's a small arms dealer. Oh, get it? <laughs> Would she have a little black hood that she'd wear the whole time? That'd be yes, adorable. Yes, T Swift. I like that. That's good. I would go with Mister T Rex. Yes. I pity the fool that can't run faster than me. <laughs> I have to be honest. I was totally unprepared for this question. Yeah. You wrote the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I wrote it at like one o'clock in the morning and then I fell asleep. And, he also uh, writes the songs that make the young girls cry. Yes. That's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to come up with, I was, try, I was trying to bring it around on a like a Teddy Ruxpin pun. So I guess I'd be like oh, wow. Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> I don't Teddy know. Ruxpin? Kid, kids love Teddy Ruxpin puns. Those are. <laughs> Yeah. Did y'all yeah. see that this is a real thing that is happening at a racetrack here in the United States? Adult what? in T-Rex costumes. Those big blow-up T-Rex costumes. They're racing and, those? And they're racing each other and you can bet on them and everything. Yeah, it looks fun. How do you? How can you tell them apart at that point? I don't know. <laughs> they probably have a number on them, like when white people race. <laughs> there you go. There is nothing funnier than those things like deflating somebody being stuck in one of those as it just starts <laughs> losing air. That's what I would bring a little pin or something with box cutter with me. And just <laughs> Take out the competition. Sure. They'd love having you running with a box cutter. That'd be good. Yeah. In a T-Rex costume. You know, for kids. Sign a waiver. It'll be fine. It's all good. I assumed it'd be like horse racing and you tell them apart just by which color clothes the jockeys are wearing. Oh, there's riders? <laughs> I, there should be. Yeah, there should be. You're right. I'll Maybe volunteer to ride. This is going to level it up. I want to ride an inflatable T-Rex. <laughs> I was picturing more like tiny little monkeys with uh, <gasps> jockeys. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> with different colored back. diapers on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little jockey helmet. Yes, yes. please. <laughs> this needs to happen. Tiny little riding boots. I'm calling that. All right. I'm next call, Keycon, I'm, we're yeah. doing that. I'm calling yes. that that racetrack and telling you. Oh, guys, we're getting a call from PETA right now. Right now we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah they want to make a greek sandwich oh uh. yeah mm, i love euros edit that out i'm more embarrassed about how long it took me to understand the joke <laughs> Our show this week is brought to you by Key to the World Travel. Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in theme parks, cruising, and destinations around the world. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com for more details and a no-obligation quote on the vacation of a lifetime. Jess, more good news about Disneyland. Yes, really good news. We actually finally have a reopening date. So dun, that's done. Dun. I know. So that's going to be on April 30th. Um, and of course, that's going to be with limited capacity. California says that theme parks can open with 15%. Disney has not said what their exact number will be 
when they Twelve. open the drawers. But um, Disney always goes one step beyond yeah. what's the limit. So they're we might find out later. Point four percent, right? <laughs> And they, they don't usually say when they kick it up. They just sort of or they haven't when they when they've done it with Disney World. So um, mm-hmm. it's only going to be open to California residents, as we said before. And they are going to use the park pass reservation system, probably exactly the same as they've been using for Walt Disney World, which has worked pretty well. Works great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no you one go has there. an annual pass, so they're going to be selling some tickets. Yeah, they're going to be definitely selling tickets. And those things are going to go super fast because, you know. California residents are probably refreshing their screens as we speak, waiting for those to, to come out. Um, yeah, but they washing their their jeans vests so they can wear them <laughs> at the parks, <laughs> sewing new patches on. Um, they did say that they are going to be debuting the new Snow White's Enchanted Wish, which was formerly Scary Adventures. Uh, so that's supposed to, supposed to open with with the parks reopening. And um, yeah, I know. No- and they. No Avengers Campus right at, at reopening. No, right? they said earlier that that's going to open later in the year, um, but they still haven't said what what the date is. They they there are photos now of it being lit up um, during these uh, a touch of Disney event that they've been having. So a touch, touch, Disney. yeah. So <laughs> and uh, this, they're, they're they said they're going to bring back characters. They're going to be physically distanced appearances. Basically the same as, as what's been happening at Disney same World, which is kind of cool. WDW. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool for them because I think they'll be able to get things rolling a lot smoother and and quickly because they're just following sort of what Florida's been doing already. Um, no parades or nighttime shows, but no big surprise on that one. And uh, they did say that uh, Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa plans to reopen on April 29th with limited capacity. Uh, the DVC section will uh, reopen on May 2nd and then mm-hmm. Paradise Pier and Disneyland Hotel will reopen at a later date. So they, they did they did not say. I think they're still working. This will just leave us with Disneyland Paris yet reopen. Yeah. And it did open, right? And then closed back down and then and opened then, and then closed yeah, again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They've been having France, a... France keeps re-entering lockdown every few weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is... Uh, all of Europe is firing back up a little bit right now. Yeah, they're having issues, but this is really, really good sign for uh, for California. And who knows, maybe by the end of the year, it'll be open for those of us that don't live in California, because I will be there as soon as that's possible. Um, Mm -hmm. And people need to realize that is a California and Governor Newsom thing, not a Disney thing that only only their California residents can go. I'm sure Disney would prefer that was not the case. (laughs) Definitely. And I, I would be willing to bet as soon as they say that it's going to be open for outside California, that we'll at least see Paradise Pier open back up. I don't know about Disneyland Hotel because they've still been working on it during this whole time, mm-hmm. doing that their DVC add on for that. So I I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of keep that as closed as long as possible to speed up that process. But we'll see. Might as well. Yeah. yeah. Even though I love Disneyland Hotel. It's my favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah. Well, Heather has a story about a couple of cruise lines that are doing something new to help yeah, she does. keep things yeah, moving, we moving heard, smoothly. We heard from two of the major lines this week that they will indeed be requiring full vaccinations for the crew and passengers uh, for adults. That is so Virgin Voyages, because it's an adult only cruise line, they're going to require every passenger be vaccinated in order to board. Even on the maiden voyage? Yes, sir. And then Royal I'm Caribbean. I'm scheduled to be on that maiden voyage. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get a shot. But what about my freedoms? <laughs> uh, so then Royal Caribbean also made the same announcement this week. But for Royal Caribbean, their guidelines are going to be everyone 18 and older and all of the crew must be vaccinated Younger than 18 for right now, they're going to just require a negative COVID test taken. And in do the we think they're going to do rapid testing right there in the terminal? I bet they do. I bet they do. That's kind of been the plan that they've had all along for the restart is that they're going to test everybody before they board. And it's it looks like even though they're going to require require proof of vaccination, they're still going to have you test in the in the port before you board just to be sure sure. because i'm sure there will be a black market for fake vaccination cards so how they're gonna handle that oh gosh i hadn't even thought yeah 
how they're going to handle making sure yeah, how they're going to handle making sure that they're they're valid and that people are actually vaccinated we shall see but this is this is these aren't the really the first lines there were some european lines that have already made that decision um american cruise lines here in the us they do uh river cruises they had previously announced that as well and i think it's really going to be across the board for all cruise lines it's honestly the best way for them to protect themselves and their sailings so that they don't have to shut down again because well, you know, one outbreak and that's, that's, that's going to shut down their cruises. So yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's also, it's also a great way to convince the elderly population to go get their shots. Cause I mean, who else is on those cruise ships? No right. shots, yeah. no shuffleboard. That's right. <laughs> it should be, the, it'll be like a poster. Get that Biden, like, point DM. DM. <laughs> <laughs> And really, yeah, this- I mean, the the way that the, the vaccination program is going in the United States, they, by the summer, you should be able to get a vaccine if you want it. So if you want to go on a cruise, get yourself a shot. I'm getting we're my first doing, one next yeah. week. Yeah, we're doing so much better than everywhere else. You know, <laughs> Europe has botched the rollout a little bit and now we've passed them. And that's why they're having a little uptick and we're not seeing the same thing. I got my first one and then my wife is getting hers. I just got her appointment for Wednesday. So we'll, we'll be good. Now my son, I don't know about him, but he's too young. Uh, Jess has a story about a very different kind of cruise. Yeah. So we, uh, we got told recently that the Jungle Cruise oh. at Magic Kingdom and Disneyland would be getting a a uh, new refurb with some new uh, scenes and theming and, and whatnot. Um, and now we have a, a little bit of uh, details that have been released, which is kind of cool. This is going to be uh, basically about the trapped safari party that finds itself up a tree after their journey goes awry. They're going to be changing out the basically normal white dudes that have been hanging on the pole for a long time and uh, putting in some more diverse uh, people. Um, so they, they released, um, this interesting interview with uh, Dr. Alberta Falls, who is the uh, granddaughter of, of world renowned Dr. Albert Falls and is also the proprietor of Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen, longest restaurant name in history. Oh, yeah. Disney presents. Yeah. That tastes so. <laughs> that tastes so. Don't, I'm not even going to get to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they released this uh, fake newspaper uh, from 1938, The Daily News. And, uh, has a, an interesting interview with her where she um, talks about her backstory a little bit and then gives some Easter eggs about some of the characters that are going to be included in the new ride, including uh, Mexican painter Rosa Soto Dominguez, botanist Leonard Moss from Nova Scotia, and entomologist Dr. Kan Chanosuke from Japan. And uh, basically, she's laying out the story that they're going to, I think, weave into the new Jungle Cruise. and. Uh, connect it more to the restaurant which is interesting and they do uh mention the society of explorers and adventurers that <gasps> come from the old um adventurers club in pleasure island so fans of that i like be. when they tie all that yeah that stuff together yeah they've been calling that back a lot lately which is kind of interesting because there's a lot of nods to that in the restaurant already so mm-hmm. Yeah, so at least they're they're diving into the theming. They're not just sort of throwing in some new paint and animatronics. Yeah. They're actually giving it a, a a deeper story than it really ever had before, which is kind of cool. So, and is Alberta Falls a redhead? I don't know. There's a she doesn't look like it from this picture. Yeah, there's a black and white photo. You can read the uh, fake interview on Disney Parks blog. Um, there's a picture of her, but it's black and white. So, actually, actually, um, she's. Not just a female uh, 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 skipper. She's also uh, of Asian descent. Her mother was from India. Ah, there you yes. go. So, so there you go. I do feel a little bit bad for The Rock, though, because for a minute there, he was awfully excited that <laughs> he thought he was going to end up in the Jungle Cruise yeah. after his movie comes out. Has that even come He's out? That hasn't even come out, has it? Yeah. No. Yeah. I remember when that movie was uh, first being shot, they talked about how. The Rock was going to work with the Imagineers to do a little of the re-theming there. Whoopsie. <laughs> they could still, you know, insert him in, just reskin one of the Navi. And... Yeah, just as you go through the tunnel, <laughs> it'll say, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? <laughs> <laughs> They'll put him on a pre and post show video like they do for uh, Brendan Fraser at The Mummy. Yeah. Now, where's my coffee? <laughs> 
Where's my protein shake? Where's Julia Stiles? I need my coffee. <laughs> there, I got my Julia Stiles jab quota in for the day. I wasn't on last week. I got to catch up. There you go. You owe us. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I hope you're not tired of hearing stories about cruising because Heather's got one more. Yes. This is my favorite. This one. I love this. So two of the cruise lines and well, and actually they're both owned by one of the same same conglomerate, but they have decided that they are just going around the CDC and they are going to launch sailings in June and get their ships back in the water. And what they're doing is they are going to be sailing round trip out of Caribbean destinations. So uh, this is Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruise Lines, and they're going to start sailing round trip out of Nassau and some other places in the Caribbean so that they just don't stop anywhere in the U.S. and they can sail. And that's they're, perfect because yeah. I'm sure the Bahamas doesn't even have a health department. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have to be you have to be vaccinated to get on the ship, so that's how they're going to handle that. And they're, they're going to start doing. Uh, they're still going to limit occupancy. They're not going to sail full, even though they are requiring vaccination. So they're going to they're going to start a little bit slow, but they're planning to launch seven night sailings from Nassau uh, that stop twice at their Coco Cay. Uh, they go to Grand Ooh. Bahama, Cozumel. And they're going to they're going to have shore excursions that you'll do through Royal Caribbean and they'll you know, they'll you take those excursions. You know that everybody in your group has been vaccinated and tested negative. So I think that really they've been thinking about this from the last year that they have been closed. And I think yeah. we're going to see that, you know, that they've really thought of everything and that it's going to be a safe process. And it's just the, the CDC is really kind of just holding out. They, you know, everybody's done all the things they need to to meet all the mitigation, and and they've gotten the green light on their ships. But now they've just been waiting for the CDC to let them do these test sailings that are required, and they just won't do it. So they've kind of yeah, said, "Okay." <laughs> that's the crappy part. They're like, "Okay, we're going to require you to do these sailings." Okay, when? Nope, yeah. we're not going to let you yet. Yep. Okay. And so they've just been canceling a month at a time this year. And um, most of them have canceled all the way through the end of June. Yeah, a year and, and a half worth of sailings. Mm -hmm. And that's when Royal Caribbean kind of just said, we've had enough. Uh, they've been Isn't doing celebrity also doing this. Yes. And celebrity is one of the brands that's under the Royal Caribbean international oh, yeah. uh, parent company. So, yes, they're they're going to have two ships that are sailing. Uh, round trip out of the Caribbean. Right now for Royal Caribbean, we've only heard about the adventure of the seas. They're going to start with that one and then slowly bring some others in. Royal Caribbean has been sailing out of um, Asia for a few months now successfully with fully vaccinated passengers and staff. They're going to add some Israel and Greece and Cyprus sailings as well this summer. Hmm. Yeah, they said that it's going to be, the, I was going to say, the leaving from Israel um, and it's going to go around the Greek islands. Mm -hmm. and they described that one as a cruise to nowhere. So I don't know if it's actually stopping at the islands or if it's just going around the islands. And they're working on putting together uh, some UK mm -hmm. cruises that are going to be just like around the British Isles for the summer. Yeah. Hmm. And I'll, I'll take any of it Caribbean, yeah. British Isles, Asia. I mean, these companies can't stay, you just can't. Stay closed a year and a half and survive. It's crazy. And it, it's, I just, I, I really think that the, the CDC put out these guidelines because they were getting so much pressure on keeping that no sale order in place. So they said, okay, well, we'll ease up. We'll let go of the, the no sale order. But then this is how they're still holding it back is by not allowing those test sailings. And who knows how long they're going to keep, keep that up. You know, they've all already lost their Alaska season and are trying to figure out ways around that. Uh, it's just, it's going to be so great to see some ships back. Boats in the water. In the water. Yeah. Uh, Celebrity is going to be going round trip out of St. Martin. So they'll be doing places like uh, Aruba, Curacao, Barbados, St. Lucia. It's really, really beautiful Caribbean ports. I won't be shocked if next week more lines announce something like this. I really think so. They're going to announce that you have to be vaccinated and then they're going to, you know, try to get their 
port space in the in the Caribbean and just do this. I think it's great. I'm excited that it's happening. Virgin has announced their second two ships will be finished by the end of the year, and they haven't even done one sailing on their first ship. What it's are those going to be called? The va- So the Scarlet Lady is finished now. That's the one that's just floating around. Then there's the Valiant Lady. And I'm forgetting. That's a terrible I'm for- name. Yeah, I'm forgetting the third one. Let me it's the Wanton you. Lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they should have stuck with the Lady of the, the Evening. Knocked, the Knocked Up Lady is no longer allowed on Virgin. They better hurry up because these ships are going to lose their new ship smell. And that sucks. Somebody's got to get that. <laughs> You yeah. can't spray that stuff in there, that fake new ship smell. It doesn't count. Yeah, they've got just a giant Christmas tree that hangs from the front of it. <laughs> the air freshener. <laughs> Anyone? I used to have an elf and one cigars. in my car. Resilient <laughs> Lady is the third one. <laughs> Resilient. None of the, the Scarlet Lady is actually great. The others yeah. are, those are bad names. Val- Scarlet, Valiant, and Resilient. I don't know who came up with these. but Since the boats are red, they should have gone Scarlet, Crimson... Rojo, yeah. I don't know, something. The Rojo, the Rojo lady. lady. <laughs> <laughs> These ship names are fascinating, but I want to hear from Jess real quick what an ALF air freshener smells like. Well, I f- it was an ALF air freshener that I found hey, really? in high school under a shelf in Walmart. <laughs> so it, it was actually an air freshener from the 80s. So it, it smelled pretty rank to begin with. But it smelled like ALF, I'm assuming. <laughs> Gross. It, was, it was from the 80s. It smelled like Dracar Noir. <laughs> <laughs> Wet cat hair and Draco. Adidas cologne. Oh, I had that stuff. Yeah, I had yeah that everyone did. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of of weird smells, there's a Dutch <laughs> museum that they have a great way that they're going to ha- attract people to come and look at their art. And they've decided that what has always been missing from looking at paintings is being able to smell them. Right. Right. So this is this is an art museum in Amsterdam or no, it's in The Hague. Sorry. Located in The Hague, it's called the Moritz Heiss Museum. And they launching this summer is Smell the Art Fleeting Scents in Color. Right. And so they're going to have smellitzers at mm. their paintings. And if that people you are going to be activate. Yeah. Scratching in an F next to the A <laughs> on that. My, on those signs. <laughs> my favorite, though, is that it's not just going to be the paintings that would have something that smells nice. So, you know, right. there's a they show there's a, some flowers that that'll be you'll get to smell the flowers or the fruits. But have you always wondered what an Amsterdam canal smelled like 400 years ago? Now you can find out. They don't smell good now. No. And this is the description of this painting that you'll be able to smell. It will it was full of excrement, waste oh. materials, and oh. all kinds of filth. Yay. Mm. <laughs> this sounds awesome. <laughs> but even better, if you can't get to this exhibition in person, the museum will be shipping people. <laughs> A box oh. with the scents so that you can look at these paintings online and smell the smells. So they'll mail you a box of poop smell. Poop smell. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> I think I'm going to yep. sign up a bunch of other people for that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> There do you, you get, the, do you the, get the scream and it comes with like a scratch and sniff sticker of halitosis? Or? Yeah. Gross. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe your maybe your elf air freshener would fit right in with one of these paintings. Elf is really? art, if you ask me. Maybe so it that's... was wet dog. <laughs> mm. Cat. Wasn't he always trying to eat the cat? He, he was, was trying to eat the cat. Yeah. I love I'm that. just barely old enough to remember elf. Oh, shut up. I came, I came home one night and my mother who had been watching our son was just cackling, laughing at Alf like it was the greatest show she'd ever seen. <laughs> She's like, I've never watched this show. It's so good. He's a cat skills like, comedian. I got why the six year old was into it, but she was, you know, 70 at the time and just cracking up. <laughs> Captured, <laughs> Captured the hearts of millions. <laughs> <laughs> When's he going to get a gritty reboot? I would watch that. Soon, yeah. Punky Brewster's back, so Alf's next in line, right? Where he yeah. really eats the cat and he's all bloody and Alf the Zack Snyder cut. <laughs> yeah, yes. Four and a half hours long. Lots of brooding. <laughs> Alf punching people. 
slow mo punches. Hey, <laughs> Willie. There's, there's a whole weightlifting scene. I was just watching Batman versus Superman with my son, and there's a whole scene where where Batman's just working out, and Ash is like, Ash is like, is he doing this to fight or is he just doing this for fun? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? I can't really tell. <laughs> He's doing it for homoeroticism. Yeah, it, it lingers for a while. And I'm here for it. It's Ben Affleck, you know. Batfleck. Well, I'm here for what apparently is the stinky portion of our show. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I've got this week's weird festival for y'all. And we're going to uh, Wisconsin, specifically Gross. Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. <laughs> What? I had to hit that sack extra That hard. was my nickname uh, in high school. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. Uh, we're we're going to go to the Wisconsin Cow Chip Festival. No. Guys. I'm good, thanks. Yeah. No, good, thank you. So, so this is really mostly just your typical kind of small town festival with, with food booths and cover bands. And they went with um, dried cow parades. poop as the theme? Bet you can't eat just fair. one. Oh no! It's not just it's not just the theme. It is the main event. What? All right, they have the the big event here is the yearly cow chip toss. Oh, um, <laughs> like throwing it up after this, you eat it? Oh. <laughs> no, they take this very seriously. They've got a big trailer that they fill up with cow patties. Um, some of these are like the size of frisbees. They are oh. big piles of dried poo. Oh, and, that sounds <laughs> shitty. <laughs> and. Uh, and um, uh, you just see how far you can throw it. Okay, um, wow. Well, I don't love it, but I do hate it. <laughs> <laughs> do they throw it like a Frisbee, you think, or like a discus? Uh, I think any way you can get it down the field, really. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to sh- share some of the official chip chucking rules with you because there's plenty of puns in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> because who doesn't like a good poop pun? Right. Um, Great poop pun. Says, the Sanitation Wisconsin workers. State chip, Cow Chip Throw Committee has released the, f- released the following list of rules, which will govern the throw. Two chips to each contestant. The th- farthest thrown counts. If it breaks up in midair, then the piece that goes farthest will be counted. Number two, which they met, point out is their favorite number. Of uh, course. Like poop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, men's, men's and women's division must be at least 16 years old. Uh, chips must be at least six inches in diameter. No ifs, ands, or but uh, oh, I see that's where it comes from. Boo. Chip chuckers must select their chips from the wagon load provided by the official meadow muffin committee. <laughs> and you can't, oh you can't, br- you can't ter- bring your own poop. No. And you can't alter the shape or sh- size of your cow. Sh- no nibbling. Sh- <laughs> <in any way. laughs> no. <laughs> no snacking. <laughs> Chip chuckers uh, must chuckers. be registered and turtly ready to go when the number is called. Uh, when throwing gloves will not be allowed. And finally, <laughs> Uh, the the rules Ew. specifically say to get a better hold on your chip, you may lick your fingers before you throw. Oh, in not after. This, <laughs> this is optional. <laughs> Instant disqualification if you do it after, mainly just because it's gross. And nobody wants that. That's finger licking good. I'm gonna pass on the cow chip festival. Thanks. I go. So did the cows. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see real quick what the. What the record is here. They've been doing this since 1975. I'm seeing an overhead shot of the festival. <laughs> it looks like about 300 people tops. At this thing. <laughs> well, uh, it looks why. like, wow, guys, I'll tell you what, the record holder for the men's division, the record was set in 1991. So this is a, this hmm. is a high bar to pass. He threw his pile of cow poop 248 feet. Wow. That's what in the world? Impressive. That's impressive. But did he lick his fingers before? <laughs> I'd assume so. And that yeah, man was Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne the Chip Johnson. So, if if you want to throw some turds around. <laughs> call you saying around. I don't? You saying I don't, all right? Who doesn't? Come to my bathroom. W- you tell w- me w- I don't throw those around. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. Digitaltravel.com. <laughs> and, uh. We've got some more information that on this commercial break. Stick around because after the commercial break, uh, we're imagining what merit badges you need to earn to advance in the ranks of expert travel. When it comes to planning your next adventure, knowledge and preparation are always key. That's why a call to your key to the world travel vacation planner should always be at the top of your to-do list when you feel the urge to venture forth and explore the world. Key to the world travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner. 
specializing in travel to Disney theme parks around the world, as well as Disney Cruise Line, Alani, and Adventures by Disney. With over 450 travel advisors who share a deep love for Disney destinations, Key to the World Travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion to help you experience all the magic with none of the work. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you, Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency with the expertise to get you where you want to go. So whether you're headed to Universal Studios, Hawaii, Europe, or somewhere a little farther off the beaten track, your first step should always be to visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Ah, summer camp. That grand old tradition where children go to weave plastic lanyards, play capture the flag, and and drink gallons of bug juice. Maybe even learn some useful skills to help them survive in the great outdoors. Our camp is a little different. We're gathered in a secret woodland campground hidden somewhere on the Gold Key Adventure Society compound to work on earning some travel merit badges. Let's take a look at some of the skills we're working on perfecting. First, we should probably make sure everybody knows what a merit badge is. Whether you're a member of the Girl Scouts, Scouts BSA, or the Junior Woodchucks, merit badges are awards given to show that a scout has earned some level of proficiency in a certain skill, ranging from the non-essential but nice to know, like basket weaving or bugling, to skills that are essential to being a successful member of the community, such as first aid or personal finances. Let's start with the big ones. What are the travel merit badges that should be required to earn the rank of Master Adventurer, and what can one of uh, what can a, one of our listeners do to earn these badges? Badges is we is don't ba- need no stinking badges. I just got a quick question: Is basket weaving still something you can get a merit badge in? I think so. And trumpeting, so. trumpeting. Yeah, you mean farting? Uh, bugling, or they might have got they might have gotten but rid trumpet. of bugling. Oh, but, oh, bugling. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still get a basket weaving one. Yeah, you have to eat a whole bag of bugles. Yeah, <laughs> I can do that. Well, I think the number one travel merit badge that should be required for Anyone who ever travels is airline etiquette. Yes, please. Yeah, no kidding. Yes. And this one has many, many steps to acquiring your your badge. Yeah, they're not giving a lot of those out, it seems, these days by every time I fly. (laughs) No. And ever. Like, (laughs) it's been delightful lately with fewer people on the air airlines, but. Yeah, and the people that are flying seem to be a little more professional at flying. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. Perhaps have started their badge. First, you have to learn the proper way to board an aircraft. This is a huge pet peeve when they start boarding and every single person in that gate area stands up and rushes the counter. Yeah, they're in like boarding group L. (laughs) They make like 70 million announcements saying, look at your zone and don't come up here until it's your turn. And yet every time you got people crowded around so and especially now when you don't want to be weaving through a crowd of people because Mm -hmm. we're supposed to be standing six feet away from each other and yet you still got the people that are blocking the gate and it's 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 not their turn yet drives me crazy when i was flying um a couple weeks ago yeah i was at the gate and they started calling and they were like "We're, we're starting with group a and this large family across from me seated i hear the dad go we're group f all right, everybody, start getting your bags together. And I was like, no, yeah. no, 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 you don't. No, no, do not. No. Finish Stay your McDonald's. You Stay there. <laughs> you know, that got that got worse. It was already bad. But when they started uh, charging for checking bags, now everybody yes. wants to carry on and there's not nearly enough room overhead. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. why everybody does that. Yeah. They that think they're going to sneak on. Is also on my list. How to put your bag properly above you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I love it when people get on the plane and they're sitting in row 50, but they're shoving their bag in without even going back there to look to see if there's anywhere to put their bag. They're putting their bag up in the first spot they see. Which is where Heather's always sitting. (laughs) (laughs) Up in row two. Also wheels first, people. Wheels first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also if you're, if you're an able-bodied person, and someone in front of you is, say, elderly or smaller yes. and can't reach up there. Yes. Get, offer down. to give 
<laughs> kick them in the face, down, no. put your bag up there and sit down in their seat. No, yeah. give them give them a hand or, or offer at least to give them a hand because yes. it, it drives me crazy when I'm like three people back and I'm just watching this businessman just stare at this woman have issues. And I'm like, all you have to do is put your hand up there and give her a hand. Give her a little boost. Yeah, because she's five feet tall and 80 years old. <laughs> I can't lift this over my head. Don't just grab somebody's bag, but ask them if, you know, you can help. The next point I had on this one was what not to do with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> do not clip your toenails. Don't clip your toenails. Do not remove your shoes. Unless there are exceptions to this. If you are on a transatlantic flight, and it's, you know, it's a 9, 10, 20 hour flight to Asia. If you're going to do that, bring a clean pair of socks to put on when you take your shoes off to go to sleep. And, you know, wash your feet before you've gone to the airport. I cannot tell you how many times I see people with their shoes off and or bare feet, like bare feet, putting them up on the wall, shoving them in between the seat in front of them, because apparently the the passengers in front of you would like to see and smell your feet Mm -hmm. and have your toe jam all over the bulkhead. I actually, my most, ugh, gross. My most recent trip, I almost saw someone. We, this, this person almost got ejected from or met by police because she was taking off her shoes and putting her feet up on the wall, which was the eg- emergency exit door. And the flight attendant told her half a dozen times, you, you don't, you can't do that. That's a door. Get your feet off of it. And had to get, it had to get to the point where she was going to threaten. To have the police meet the plane because she wouldn't obey the flight attendant. Was part of you hoping that door would fling open and suck her out of there? <laughs> a little bit, but then I was worried what would happen to me. So you're just tightening up your <laughs> yeah. tightening up your seatbelt. Yeah. Watch her go. <laughs> Hanging on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I hate feet so much. Like I really I hate my own feet. I'm basically like a never nude when it comes to feet. Like I'm always wearing socks. <laughs> Like, yes, if I could, like wears on his if feet. I could, if I could wear him in the shower, and then like it, it, it intrigued me as a child seeing that movie, uh, Better Off Dead, when he gets out of the shower and he wears his socks in there and he uses his hair dryer to dry him off. I was like, this is genius. You don't That's even have you. to take him off in the shower. That's you. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want anybody's feet anywhere near yeah. me. Mm-mm. My Do last you have like caveman was... feet? I, I don't have horrible feet, but I just you think just feet, like are, feet. feet are weird and disgusting in, in general. I don't like them. <laughs> Interesting. No. My last point was basically just how to treat fellow passengers in general. Can we all just get along on the plane and be polite to each other? I have a big pet peeve on on short flights with people leaning their seat all the way back into my lap. We're on a one hour flight from Atlanta to Orlando. Do you really need to have your seat almost flat so you can take a nap? I mean, come on. Yeah, it's not necessary. Gotta get my lean on. I mean, I get it when you're on transatlantic flights and you're you, everybody's got to try to sleep. But then the person behind you is probably leaning back to try to sleep, too. But it bothers me. It bothers me on domestic flights when people do that. See, and I have a really bad back. The- and what I do is bring like a jacket or some sort of pillow and put it lower. And it, it lets you kind of recline without pushing the seat back into somebody else. As mm-hmm. long as you're on like one yeah. of those planes that has a little bit more like leg room. Mm-hmm. And then... Same thing when getting off the plane. The second <laughs> that that stops at the gate, you do not need to jump up and grab your stuff and shove your way as far forward as you can. Let's you yeah. know, just wait your turn. Yeah, deplaning is my biggest is is the part that gets me the most. Yes, crazy. it kind of <laughs> drives me nuts videos. right now because the at least on Delta they specifically say stay in your seat and wait until the person in front of you has moved six feet yeah. away, and no one ever does it ever. We had this old couple. Well, there were several old couples that just like got up and ran right past us. I have noticed if I travel by myself, they don't do that to me. And I have watched if I travel with Heather, who's five foot one and a woman, they pretty much knock her down to get past her or, but there's, they'll, they'll just pull her stuff out of the overhead thing and move it and put their stuff in there. Like I would choke slam somebody if they did that to me and they know that. Businessmen. Yeah. The the flying, the men in suits in first class, they are the worst behaved. And I've had that happen several times. Just watch him move my back. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. The only comfort is knowing that they're going to drink poop coffee. Yes. (laughs) I don't warn them at all about drinking the coffee on a plane. 
Never drink the coffee on a plane. That should be your merit badge, too, is don't drink That's coffee true. airplane. Because <laughs> apparently those tanks of potable water, they never get all the way empty before they refill them. So yep. that bottom part becomes mm -hmm. bacteria laden and you so get they never clean as, them as heather did you get dysentery oh, <laughs> from drinking airplane coffee mm -hmm. so don't do it get you a lesson. starbucks in the airport yep. before you get no up. coffee no tea and don't drink the water unless you see them pour it out of a bottled water they say don't wash your hands either in the in the bathrooms i never wash my hands when i go to the bathroom i do anyway. but i i carry hands it's called an immune so. system and i have my freedoms as a patriot <laughs> <laughs> well there you go airline etiquette start working on your merit badge we can we can do this everybody can become eagle scout level it's a psa <laughs> yeah all my uh all my merit badges are are either related to personal mishaps or Things that I've learned about the theme park, so I'm I'm pretty okay. uh, I'm pretty specific. But my 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 most important one that I I brag about all the time is that I, at any given theme park, uh, Disneyland, Universal, Disney World, I know where the best bathroom is and how to mm. best get there. I like that. That was one of mine. Is just knowing and, and also bathrooms. where the worst one is, basically, because if you can't get to the best one, you really <laughs> want to avoid the worst ones. And sometimes it's fun to refer people to the worst one if you can. If they ever, <laughs> if anyone's ever asking, you just send them to if the bad one. If it's a busy time, like I, I prefer the bathrooms that don't have anybody in them. So mm -hmm. seriously, <laughs> I, I introduced Zach to one. The uh, he had no idea about that one tucked behind Pirates of the Caribbean. That's a good one. I was like, that, one, like that, that one's one. great. Mm, yes. That is a good one Hold at Walt up. Disney World, about... oh, but yes. not at Disneyland. The one by Pirates at Disneyland. Oh, that one is no, the yeah, no. yeah. Back at the back end of that, New Orleans Square. Yes. Oof. It yeah. smells like a cross between the diesel coming from the train that's parked right behind it and the poop that's coming from the bathroom. <laughs> yes. And then that weird uh, bathroom cleanser stuff that they use. It's it basically smells like New smells. Orleans. Exactly. And because it's, a, yeah, it, because it's a dead end, it all just hangs there. It can't go anywhere. Yeah, that's that's pretty nasty. Back there. Gross. This is a very poop centric episode. It kind of is. What's going on? One, one that I have found that is great is uh, at below Tower of Terror, there's a men's. And a women's and then the family one. No one's ever in the family or the uh, you need help one. So if you ever have to go number two, that's a great one because it's private one seater and no one's ever in there. That's true. That is a good one. Although really, you know, it's kind of like there's no atheist not in, in a foxhole. Depending on the situation, is there really a bad bathroom? No. Depending on how bad you feel. I mean, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I've guess if you just ate it flows, just, I would rather poop in my pants than poop in some bathrooms <laughs> I've seen. I mean, I guess that's, that's fair. That's, that's when you fair. just get on a dark ride. None of them at Disney <laughs> are bad enough. I wouldn't go there. But. Yeah, no, there's there's some that are great, though. I found like the deluxe hotel bathrooms are great because like the men's room has like real stalls that are just separate rooms. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that was really cool. A nice private stall yeah. with a door or a you, long door that goes all the way to the ground. You go to Pop Century and there's like a there's a janitor in the stall with you. He's like, nope, yeah. I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> just like the 60s. Feet. Welcome. Woo. You missed a spot. <laughs> Here's an extra square. <laughs> all star <laughs> movies, it's in someone's room. The public bathrooms are in the actual guest Those rooms. are non-preferred rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other bathroom related merit badges? Because we need to get off this topic. Wait, let me okay, check. That's fair. I, nope, I'm I good. do not. <laughs> My merit badge would be in uh, remembering what to pack. Yeah, I am the packing, worst at yes. packing way too much, but still, mm -hmm. I don't have any of my charging cables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's that's really the word or any of my camera stuff or a battery or it, there's always something where I just go, oh, I don't have mm -hmm. that thing. And so I've started what I did was get two little pouches. One is all my camera and battery and charger cable stuff. The other one is all my phone things, watch charger, all of that stuff. And I have it already packed. And then all the things like passports and all stay in my backpack. But mm -hmm. what I do is forget one of those three bags. <laughs> so yeah. I either have no camera stuff or no charge. But you it's pared it down. Home. So yeah. yeah, I get crap from my husband for packing too much. But I like to keep one little rolling carry on that I always bring with yeah. me that has all of my essentials. My toiletries are in there. My makeup, my charging cables, all that stuff just stays in that bag. And as long as I bring that one, I feel like I have the essentials. And if I forget 
you know, to something else that usually I'm going somewhere where I can find it. But nobody wants to have to be searching for a an Apple Watch charger or a computer charger or something like that, where it's expensive and probably you can't find it. I have been to shop. Target with you to purchase an yes. Apple Watch charger. Yes, you have. In yes. recent memory. Which, which is why it lives <laughs> in yes, that carry And then I now. used it last time we traveled because <laughs> yes, I did. couldn't find mine. I have an extra in, in there as well now. So just in case. Well, and I, I always keep enough chargers for all four people in my family because I get the crap about packing too much, mm-hmm. but guess who always has the things? Yeah. And also who cares how much you pack? Yeah. Well, I've been trying to, I've, I've been trying to find the line between being prepared and having crap that I'll never need because mm-hmm. I can think of a billion things that I need and being prepared for like every possible weather condition and stuff as yeah. far as clothes go. And I end up with, you know, two bags full of and crap that I don't touch. I have decided unless you're camping or somewhere where you really can't get essentials, like if you're going to Disney or a resort, they have mm-hmm. everything you would need. No. I do always bring my, I have a pouch that's full of the refills for the medications that I like to carry in the parks because I don't want to ever have to have Imodium, but I also don't ever want to be without it. Mm-hmm. Just in I'm case. always within like a 48 that. hour window of diarrhea. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Traveling life goals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Packing is a bit of a science yep. and uh, and an art form at the same time. So it's I think that's a great merit badge. I would honestly rather have too many clothes than, than not enough. Yeah, me too. So, you know, if you you never know when you're gonna sweat through something or always. I do a lot I do of that. To, <laughs> I do know daily I'm going to sweat through in, in Disneyland Paris. You just never know. Yeah. Tell that story. <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> I will. It's why we always travel with the modium. <laughs> <laughs> French food. It's what's yes. for dinner. One of mine that, well, I've got a few that are kind of quick hits, but like one of them that's kind of essential is learning how to relax. Cause, mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was on, that was one of mine too. Rum. Y- you and <laughs> yeah even well yeah that's definitely one way to relax but you get you see these people that get to where they're going and then they're not having any fun because they're sweating getting to their next reservation or doing everything that they can it's just like screaming at their kids because they're you know not relaxed and having fun in a theme park yeah. that's meant for families my father was i mean we did some amazing vacations we lived in the south pacific we toured we went to asia we went to all these different islands and all around Hawaii. And j- he was such an over planner and we did awesome stuff, but he'd be having the time of your life here. And he'd like, guys, come on, we got to leave the greatest place you've ever been. So we can go to this blue hour. Just mm, always yeah. pulling you. He was like uh, Chevy chase in vacation. Like, ah, the grand Canyon, <laughs> look at his splendor. Let's go. <laughs> it's like he had a, too much FOMO. Like, yeah, you're going to miss the next thing. But just not over planning. And then that way, when when you miss something, who cares? There's something else to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And like every time I write up kind of a final documents for a travel client, I always tell them we've made all these plans. There's a whole ton of stuff on this list. Use the plan as a guide, but don't don't hesitate to not do mm-hmm. any of it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, these are in case yeah. you want to do them. You've got the plan and you're ready. But seriously, do there's going to be better things Especially to kind of if you have in the moment. young children with you and they're having a blast playing in a splash pad somewhere or something mm-hmm. you hadn't yeah. anticipated. Take that hour, sit on a bench, take pictures of them and let them enjoy and you relax. And who cares if you didn't make that gross dinner at the undersea mm-hmm. restaurant? <laughs> I mean, or I, whatever. Gu- I, I guarantee most parents, we've all had that moment where we realized our kid wanted to be at the hotel pool more than any of the theme parks. Yes. Oh, sure. And oh, yeah. yeah, you just got to go with that. I mean, and that's great because there's usually a pool bar. Pool so bar. Just, yeah. <laughs> hit the pool bar, sit down and enjoy it. Yeah. The that's only time that ever did really months, bother me yeah. was why I had a friend join us. And it was right when uh, it was during spring break and it was right when the uh, tiered pricing for day tickets came out. <laughs> So I had paid like $139 for his friend to join us at Animal <laughs> Kingdom. We were there about two and a half hours. And they were like, can we go back to the hotel and swim? And we did that. And we had a great time. And I was able to relax and have a drink. But I did choke her nearly to death. <laughs> You're paying this back somehow. 
that ticket was. But other than that, I'm very relaxed. I try to be very relaxed when I travel. Just yeah. don't don't sweat it if you don't make a plan. I think another important skill is uh, navigation skills. I know that. I mean, I know that we've all got an app on our phone these days. They'll tell you where to go, but um, it's it's actually really good to know how to read a map. You don't mm-hmm. have to be like. I had this on my to... list: travel orienteering, orienteering how to read subway maps because those are tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I'm not great at that. I can do it just because I lived in New York for a while, but mm-hmm. yeah, New York you is have where to. I... You have to learn the different lines and what stops each different yes. l- different train on each different line makes because it's not all the and same. And which 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 direction is it going? How yeah. do you tell which direction it's going? And, and so which its, its own places. schedule? Like they have mm-hmm. so so many of the great places in in the world to see are in big cities with with subways. Oh. I've I've mastered Paris and London and New York. And I, th- I think really those are the only. Three. Yeah, in Paris, she always knows right where we're going to get out and which direction to. Yep. To head never, when you never come out get of the turned around come out of the metro. Definitely go the wrong way. That is the trick when you come out of a subway is you don't know which block you know which mm-hmm. uh, corner you're on so it's, unless you have a landmark to orient yourself. Mm, and in Paris, there's almost always more than one exit at each stop. Mm-hmm. And if you exit the wrong exit, you're you're going to be looking in a direction you weren't expecting. As far as just regular maps, I almost have to pull a Joey from Friends and get in the map. I don't really have to stand in it, but I do always have to yes. keep orienting it where I'm I'm facing north or whatever. Yeah, I'm a visual sometimes person. Sometimes I kind of miss. Yeah, sometimes I kind of miss having to read a map. Yeah, <laughs> just, I was good at it. Yeah, you have turn by turn navigation on your phone now, like Dan mentioned. But sometimes it's fun just to. Get out the map and I'm the map. (laughs) Well, if you're good at looking at a map and get an idea where everything's located relative to each other, then you don't even have to get out the map or the directions because you can just know, well, if I had, if the castle's here and I head over here, eventually I'm going to hit this, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's all about, yeah, being able to, in your brain, put yourself in a space and know relatively where things are. I found that a lot of places I go, I don't know the street names or whatever, but you know, it's like if I go home to, or at home, if I go visit in Ohio where I grew up and I haven't been there for several years, I don't remember street names and stuff, but I can find my way around really well because I know relative locations of things. Mm-hmm. And that just takes practice. And But you can figure that out from looking at it. I grew up in Atlanta and I haven't lived there since I was 18, but I could still go there and discern all the different peach tree streets because yeah, there's, like, there's like yeah. 50 of them street yeah. avenue way yeah. and most of them are just peach tree street you just have to know what it intersects with what part of town it's actually in yeah <laughs> i i admire people who just have a natural sense of direction and can go anywhere once jeff is like this it, i think it's you have such a visual memory mm-hmm. that you go someplace once and you can find your way back there. Not everybody has that. Yeah. And some people have to try a little My harder. My son has, does not have that at all. He uses, he's been at the university of Alabama for this whole school year and he still uses his GPS to walk to classes. <laughs> <That's hysterical. laughs> and I made fun of him. He goes, you wouldn't know your way around. I was like, I could go to every one of your classes right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah. After having gone there because we went there once to check out where his buildings were going to be because I was just curious for myself and I remember where they all are. Well, the good news is that's something that can be learned and it's, Mm -hmm. you know, comes from another skill that's important and it's attention to detail. Yes. Wait, what was that last word? (laughs) (laughs) We do have fun. Um, Creative problem solving, I think, is a a good uh, skill to have also. Being able to think on the fly. Yeah. I don't do that at all, actually. (laughs) Like, if something goes wrong, I just panic. (laughs) And try not to freak out. Yeah. I freak out every time. (laughs) That is my instinct, but growing up with my dad, that was why. But I have learned now, just like, ah. And honestly, I started this motto years ago before I had any money, but it was throw money at the problem. Like, oh, my God, we're never going to be able to get from here to here on this dumb, crowded bus system. Like I said that the first time we traveled together, I said, throw money at it and just went and got a cab because it was pre-Uber. And like Mm -hmm. everyone in our group was like, nobody uses a cab at Disney. Like, well, they're right there. 
I'd rather pay 12 <laughs> bucks and get ready to go than stand in this line. For hours. Especially if there's mm-hmm. three or four of you, that's four bucks a piece. Go do it. I always tell Absolutely. people when we're, that's the other thing I always tell them actually when I'm trying, when I'm uh, suggesting that they should buy the trip protection insurances, uh, no matter how well prepared you are, mm-hmm. you can't plan for everything. So you have to be ripe with a solution as you're going. And the weirdest stuff can and will happen. Yeah. Yes. And you don't want to be without that when it does happen. <laughs> So it's funny you you brought up that we were going to do merit badges because I actually just got an email uh, from Bob Iger that they're sending me a merit badge for spending more than the average family of four's monthly rent on merchandise with a cartoon (laughs) mouse on it. Nice. (laughs) So I have. Yeah, you you guys, I I think, are going to be getting yours, too. I have a sash full of that same one. (laughs) It's going to be delivered with Bob Iger's going to be with balloons on my front porch. So Mm -hmm. that'll be awesome. He's like, you spent too much money. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> full of hot air i have a, an expert level badge that this isn't a, a requirement but is a very handy to have in some places is knowing how to drive a stick shift and bonus points for being able to drive a stick shift on the left hand side of the road oh dear i don't know how to do yes. either of those who I, I drive a stick in my, my normal life and I love it. But when I got in a car in Ireland and tried to drive one on the other side of the car and on the other oh, side of the road. Oh, yes. Shifting you know, your hands. My yeah. brain. Hey, so when you're, is the stick shift oriented the other way where first is mm-hmm. towards you? And so it's still like it is if you were in the other seat. Yes. And that's what killed me because I wanted it to be still, you know, first gear, Just still be the one that's closest to me. Yeah. But it's not. You're just sitting on the other side of the car. So now first gear is further away. I think I would prefer it the way it is. So long. I still know that it's that. Well, know, it's and you're, weird. Shift, you're shifting with your other hand and you yeah. have to stay on the other side of the road. It is a skill that takes some time. That's when you Uber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah throw money. Yeah. At <laughs> <laughs> I did okay with the driving on the left in an automatic, but the stick at that just that took too much time. And there may have been a mirror that was no longer on a. <laughs> an Irish rental car. <laughs> and you had to throw money at that deposit. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, I think that basic first aid should also be a requirement. Oh, you know, yeah. you, for the major stuff, you can find a first aid station, but if you know how to uh, deal with blisters and mm-hmm. recognize toe. when you're broken yeah, toe, broken and that toe. The, the first aid at Magic Kingdom could care less. <laughs> No, they couldn't. Yeah, sorry. No. They could not care less. It's part of the pirate experience, toe. okay? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you hobbled off yeah. the ride. And you are in pain. <laughs> Authentic. That looks, that looks really black and purple. It looks gross. Yeah. Here, here's a nice pack. Yep. Have a well, nice day. What else do you do for a broken toe, really? Yeah. Tape a popsicle stick to the bad boy. And keeping first yeah. aid a little bit with you uh, uh, in, a, mm-hmm. in my fanny pack, I have... At least band-aids. Band-aids and uh, polysporin. Mole skin stuff for your mm-hmm. uh, feet is really great. The little padded sticker stuff that you can put on your feet. Mm-hmm. 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 Blister yeah, band-aids skin. or mole skin. I'd yeah. never recommend new shoes for a walking Disney trip. Oh, no. no. Mm-hmm. Also, things like being able to recognize when you're starting to get dehydrated or what to do about mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. heat issues and stuff. Yeah, so I'm bad about that. That kind of thing is, is good. Do you guys have anything else? Uh you should get a merit badge and having the required paperwork for the country you are entering. <laughs> yes. That didn't so much used to be a thing, but now with all the COVID and the mitigation things that are happening, some countries require a test before going or an authorization form. And there's always been countries that require a, more than a passport. You have to have a visa that you have to apply for. And people always think, the passport card is going to be enough for this no. kind. No, don't stop doing that. Get, I'll spend eight grand on a trip to Ireland and think I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a passport. Oh, that never makes any sense to me. We keep seeing people denied boarding on our trips recently mm-hmm. out of the country because they don't have. They have part of the paperwork they need, but not some other part of the paperwork they need. Yeah, that could be a merit badge in hiring a travel agent. Yes, <laughs> there you go. One hundred percent. It's almost like we're kind of back in Casablanca, and everybody's like, "Your there. papers, please." Yep. Yes, it's yes. true. It's weird. Reek, reek. You have to give me a vaccination. <laughs> we we had gotten like we were all going so far away from paper. Where everybody just had an app with a QR code, and now mm-hmm. you have seven different pieces of paper, and they give you one on the plane to fill out before you land. And 
crazy now. But just to go to Hawaii, that's our own country. You have to have all these different mm -hmm. like required things. And we we keep seeing people that are kicked. They wait till you have spent the money to fly all the way to Hawaii. And then they won't let you in and just turn you around. Yeah, we did. Do we just talk recently about some tourists that tried to bribe the TSA in yeah, Hawaii? Yeah, in Hawaii, they didn't have what they needed. And it was thirty five hundred dollars. I one hundred percent would have let them in. <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't work at TSA. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple, a couple more that I had that are maybe not uh, required. Maybe they're more elective, but I think they definitely help with uh, appreciating your trip. Is um, a photography mirror badge mm, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so that you don't end up with the same boring shots of your family in front of things uh, everywhere you go. <laughs> yes. Or also, selfies women. of you in front of something where you can see maybe 10% of what's behind you and most of yes. it's just your and face. When there are groups of women together, <laughs> you don't have to squat. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> the sorority squat. You ain't fool anybody with that filter their either. knees and get down and either put their hands on their knees or they just squat. So they're all the same height. Like no one cares that you're the same height. You're not a dance line. It's just, I don't understand this. They're doing a pyramid. Could, they just forgot to finish it. Yeah. Jeff could and has given a complete Ted talk on uh, yes. travel photography. We'll have to do a more in-depth coverage of that sometimes it's hard to do in a podcast it's hard format. to talk about yeah <laughs> yeah maybe we'll yeah in other words i'm not doing that yeah. <laughs> in translation <laughs> go after no 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 audio i'll do a vlog on it there you go um art and music appreciation so you mm -hmm. can do something other mm -hmm. than no, that apparently that's smell appreciation good. now too. Yeah, go yeah. to the Dutch Museum. Some of my favorite stuff else. when I have traveled, particularly in Europe, but international travel in general, is the art that you can buy and see. But not just that, but the street art or folk art that you see when you're out, mm -hmm. out and about. I love graffiti if it's well done stuff, not just like my nads, you know, scribbled on the side <laughs> of a wall. Hey, I worked hard on that. Come on. Beautiful murals done in graffiti and just beautiful stuff in every big city. They have it. And all over Paris, there was some amazing that stuff. That was fun. Yeah. We saw some there was stuff. one guy, I can't remember his name, but he was, he had been sort of doing the um, Banksy thing where he was hitting these things at night and they had a big fully formed things that would pop up overnight. And we saw several of them uh, when we were in Paris and it was really, really cool. Um, and then uh, also uh, the last thing on my list was culinary studies mm, so that you can mm -hmm. appreciate the culture through food instead of yes. seeking out McDonald's. I'm not really much of an eater. Weird for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, More I think that includes beverage truth. also. Food and beverage studies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just wandering around in a city and trying the stuff that no. you can find at markets and things. But also feeling comfortable, like being able to order that stuff, because I think a lot of times people go somewhere, especially if you're in another country and you see all this stuff, but you don't know how to ask for it or mm -hmm. find out what it is, whatever. So just point at the point, menu. Pointing works. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Or pointing. I like to sit for a while and just watch the people around me receive plates and then inquire like, well, that looks good. What is that? Even, I'll try one of those. Yeah. Even in my own local restaurants, I'll do that. Like, dude, that looks great. It becomes a real adventure in Asia because there's chances are you may not know what that is yeah, or you have ever it. heard of it. And it you may still be alive. It's been soaked in. Yeah, but it might taste delicious. You're like, it's such a cute little bun. And you're, they're like, no, it's filled with beaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the beak like, bun. Oh, yay, yay. <laughs> I could just see myself pointing at the menu and being like, I'll take that. And they're like, sir, that's the disclaimer that you shouldn't eat undercooked food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Those are our hours that we're open. That's not a dish. Bring it out. <laughs> Bring me more. And I, I just be willing to eat the local cuisine. Just mm -hmm. try it. And don't, don't go to Oh, Charlie's yeah. in Europe or something. <laughs> if you don't or like in, it, in America, you, you don't, don't go to like it, but yeah, yeah. Really. yeah, if you don't like it, no big deal. But you might actually find something that you've never mm -hmm. tried before that you love. It right. blows my mind when you see someone in Europe eating at a Planet Hollywood or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or a Five Guys burgers and fries. Five guys. Where else are you going to eat like twice fried chicken taters next to a exoskeleton from T2? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> when we were at Disneyland Paris, we ate at both Planet Hollywood and Five Guys burgers. And fries. <laughs> yeah. When I went to England, I ate at McDonald's a lot. So <laughs> we did have children with us that were jet lagged and over all of it. Yes. That'll usually dictate a lot of things. Let's yeah. just, just put some greasy fries in them and yeah. it'll make this all go yeah. better. <laughs> and it did. Yeah, everything went better from then on out. I mean, let's be honest. It might look weird, but people eat that stuff every day. Mm-hmm. Because they live there, I like so a nice bucket of necks. Awful. <laughs> Most I'm, I'm going with Jess's bun full of beaks. I've got to find where I can get that. Just crunchy beaks in a soft bow bun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me some KFC for cool. lunch now. Beaks and feet. That delightful. Yeah. Try the kernels, beaks and feet. <laughs> well, if you'd like to have some beaks and feet. Well, thanks for hanging out with us again this week. If you're excited to earn some merit badges by honing your travel skills, Keep to the World Travel has a summer camp dining hall full of expert travel planners, and they're ready to make your vacation dreams a reality. Head to www.keeptotheworldtravel.com to get started with a no-obligation quote. Don't forget to catch up with our friend, the Theme Park Professor, for all the latest theme park news and tips at www.themeparkprofessor.com. Word of mouth is always the best way to help us grow our show. If you have a friend or two who you think would appreciate our special brand of globetrotting jackassery, tell them what makes our show so great and send them our way. You can find links to subscribe to the show on your favorite apps and all the latest news at www.goldkeyadventures.com. Can't wait to hang out with you again next week. See you real soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Uh, I think we've all earned a a merit badge in knowing not to ever eat at flows. <laughs> 100%. To ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the gold key adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song Hoka Hey for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventure Society. And until then, remember, life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure.